In this question, a uniform disc with radius small r and mass m can roll without slipping on a cylindrical surface and is attached to a bar a, b, c with a length l and a negligible mass. The bar is attached to a point a like this to a spring with constant k and can rotate freely about point b. So this is hinge. This rod is hinged about this point b in the vertical plane. Knowing that the end a is given a small displacement and then released. Determine the frequency of the resulting vibration in terms of uh, this mass, length, k, and g. So we have to find the uh, frequency of uh, oscillation of this uh, disc. Okay, so let's see how to do this. So uh, method one, I am using the force and torque method. Okay, so using force and torque method, I will try to prove that that angular acceleration of this is uh, directly proportional to this uh, small displacement. So, this method in this method, I have shown this uh, system by displacing by a very small amount theta. So, suppose this is uh, displaced by a very small theta. This is the initial position of the rod, and from there it is displaced by a very a small angle theta. Okay. So, what is the displacement of this end of the rod? So, uh, this is a this this end will move uh, on a arc, but you can take this uh, this is like a straight line because this theta is very very small. So, what is this arc length? This arc length is going to be. So, since this is L by 2, so this arc length is L by 2 into theta. So, it will move by this much distance, and this is the compression of the spring also. So, this force, <coughs> force on this rod will be. So, force on this rod will be, I am showing it here. This is F, and this F will be equal to KL by 2 into theta. So k into x, okay, and x is l by 2 into theta. So this force is nearly, nearly horizontal, and rod is nearly, nearly vertical because angle is very, very small. So this rod is nearly vertical, and this force is nearly horizontal. Okay, so we can go by this approximation. Okay, now this force is equal to this, and what about the forces uh, applied by the hinge here and applied by the disc? Okay, so here I will show the force applied by the disc, and here I will show the force applied by the hinge on this rod. This rod is massless. Okay, so this rod is massless. So on a massless rod, one thing is net force should be zero. So net force is zero and net torque is also zero. So we should ensure that net force is zero and net torque is zero. So according to that, forces will come over here. Okay. So if I do net torque about this hinge zero, okay. If I do net torque about this hinge to be zero. So the force uh, will be like this. Okay, so force is like this. And for net torque to be zero, the force uh, should be equal to F only. Okay, so the force will be equal to F only because this distance is L by 2 and this distance is L by 2. So torque produced by this force is F into this distance L by 2 that is anti-clockwise and this will produce uh, clockwise torque about this hinge. So this would be F. Okay, so this force is also F. Okay, now a resultant force is created. Okay, F and F, it will create a resultant force. So the force due to hinge will be something like this. Okay, so the force due to hinge will be something like this. So this is the force due to hinge. And this force is going to be 2F. So 2F is the force applied by this hinge now. Okay, so this is the free bar diagram of this rod. and. Uh, this force this force is applied by the disc this force is applied by the disc on the rod in the horizontal direction so the same force will be applied on this disc also so here i am <coughs> showing the forces on the disc so let us show the forces on the disc here so force on the disc uh, uh, this f is acting towards left so this f uh, here will be acting towards right okay so this is the force applied by the rod on the disc so in this diagram uh, i will show the forces on the disc so this is the force and this force f is equal to kl by 2 into theta so this force is kl by 2 into theta so this force is acting over here and other force so one force is mg and i am only showing the component of mg like this okay so this component of mg which is perpendicular to this r vector is going to be mg sin theta so we can see that this is mg sin theta this force is mg sin theta 
okay so these are two forces and other forces on this disc because this disc will also rolling it is pure rolling so the friction force will be there okay so friction force will be there and how the friction force will act so this center will accelerate uh, like this okay so acceleration of center i can assume to be a okay so center acceleration is something like this this is acceleration a of the center and uh, there should be no slipping over here so if there is no slipping over here so it, it should rotate by some angular acceleration let's say alpha so angular acceleration of this disc is let's say alpha so alpha into r in that direction and a will balance each other and that's why there is no slipping here okay and this disc center of this disc is uh, you can say this is in circular motion about this point okay so about this point about this point it is doing to and fro type of oscillations okay so it is doing to and fro type of motion so center of the disc is performing uh, oscillations about this point so about this point this is doing a circular motion center is doing the circular motion about this point and what is this radius this radius is going to be l by 2 so in radius l by 2 this is performing a circular motion and uh, oscillation also okay so about this uh, i am assuming the acceleration angular acceleration of the center okay so angular acceleration of the center will be like this so it's very important here this is let's say alpha dash so alpha dash what is alpha dash let me write it so this alpha dash is this is angular acceleration of center of disc due to its circular motion due to its uh, circular motion about that hinge okay about that hinge point okay so this is it now we can relate uh, this uh, three variables a alpha and alpha dash so what is the relation between them the relation between them can be written like this so this a should be equal to alpha into r because of no slipping and since uh, this point is performing circular motion and this a is basically the tangential acceleration of that circular motion okay and radius is l by 2 so i can write a this is also equal to alpha dash multiplied with l by 2 okay so this is the relation a is equal to alpha this is in turn equal to alpha dash into l by 2 now i can write the uh, dynamics equation i am going to take the torque about this point torque about this bottom point okay and this is also the instantaneous axis rotation and this is uh, basically accelerating if there is omega so but uh, its acceleration will be towards the center and uh, there will be no pseudo torque okay so i can apply the torque equation about this point so i am going to apply torque about this point so torque about this uh, bottom point let's say this point is p so torque about this bottom point p is equal to i about this uh, p and uh, uh, this is alpha so this alpha is uh, this alpha angular acceleration of the disc so torque about p so torque about uh, p is uh, due to mg sin theta and uh, due to this is force there will be friction also we were discussing about friction so friction will act how how the friction will act friction should act like this there is another force which is normal reaction also so we can show it here also so this force is normal reaction okay so this is friction and this is the normal reaction force uh, if we take torque about this one so there is no torque due to this friction and this uh, normal reaction okay so we can take torque of mg sin theta mg sin theta torque uh, will be clockwise and uh, to find this torque uh, uh, i can drop a perpendicular over here and if i drop a perpendicular over here you can say that uh, you can see that this perpendicular distance is r cos theta so ultimately you will multiply this with r cos theta okay so let us write all the torques so torque is uh, due to mg so mg sin theta multiplied with uh, small r k l by 2 theta multiplied with r cos theta and ultimately we will what we will do cos theta will be nearly equal to 1 so this will be dropped okay uh, this will be replaced with 1 and sin theta will be replaced by theta because it is very small and what is the i i is uh, about that bottom axis 3 by 2 m r square this is i and now i want to represent uh, alpha dash in terms of theta because this is performing oscillations about this point and this is the angular acceleration so what i have to do we have to represent this alpha dash in terms of theta alpha dash is equal to some omega square into theta that will be the omega square if i represent it like this so this alpha dash need to be brought in this equation so here it will be alpha 
okay 3 by 2 m r square into alpha and this alpha now i'm going to replace with uh, this one so for alpha you can write alpha dash l by 2 r so here only i'm going to reply this uh, replace this alpha dash l divided by 2 r okay so replacement is done now just manipulations so this uh, sine theta can be replaced by theta so mg and you can see this r is also getting cancelled r one r is from here and r r and r okay so overall this r is cancelled so this is mg into theta and this will be k l by 2 into theta okay so this will be simply k l by 2 into theta and uh, this is equal to 3 by 2 m and this is alpha dash l and 1 by 2 is uh, already there so this will become it this will make it 4 okay so let's uh, write 4 here so now it is a matter of calculation just uh, i am going to write it directly now alpha dash can be written as 2k alpha dash can be written as 2k by 3m okay 2k by 3m uh, due to this factor plus uh, 4g by 3l due to the g factor okay so this is your omega square so omega square finally will come out as 2k by 3m 4g by 3l and if you want to write omega so you can take under root of it and frequency can be written from here so frequency this is 2 pi f if i write in terms of root so it will be like this so let me rub this here and this omega can be written as 2 pi f so f will be equal to this omega over 2 pi so this is the answer for the frequency okay so going for the next method method number two method number two is the energy conservation method we have to write the energy at some general instant then we can differentiate that energy to find the time period or frequency of the motion so what are the energies involved here so energies involved will be the kinetic energy of this thing which is uh, the rotational plus translational okay so you will write the kinetic energy of this thing disk and potential energy okay suppose this is the main this is the main position and uh, from main position you are displacing this by angle theta so how much center of mass is going up so you will take that into account and write the potential energy over here and uh, one more thing there is a spring also which is i'm not going to show in this diagram okay so in the previous diagram you can see there was a spring here and a spring is compressed by l by 2 into theta so that energy will also be there okay i'm only showing the uh, center or hinge about which uh, the center is uh, doing circular motion okay so this point is shown over here and this disc having the center's velocity to be v and it is rotating with angular velocity omega and if friction is there only so friction is static if friction is static so it is not doing any work okay so there is a static friction here and in case of static friction we can apply energy conservation okay so about this hinge this center is having the angular velocity omega dash and angular acceleration alpha dash as we have seen in the first method also so let us write the total energy okay so let's write total energy so kinetic energy of the disk let first find kinetic energy of the disk kinetic energy of the disk is half mv square and half icm into omega square so icm is mr square by 2 and omega is v by r from the condition of uh, the pure rolling so let us write that condition over here so pure rolling condition and all the conditions uh, combined v is equal to omega r and this v can also be written in terms of omega dash omega dash multiplied with l by 2 and again a is equal to alpha r and uh, alpha dash l by 2 all these conditions okay kinetic energy of disk is half uh, m v c m square half i c m into omega square omega square is v square by r square okay so we can write it like this so it is finally 3 by 4 m v square okay 3 by 4 m v square and uh, for v you can write simply omega dash ultimately we have to um, make the equation of alpha dash in terms of theta okay so for that you can write it like this 3 by 4 m and for v you will write omega dash l by 2 square v is equal to omega dash l by 2 square okay so potential energy of the disk gravitational potential energy so gravitational potential energy is just see how much height it has gone above from here so if you see in this one so initially till this point till this point what was this height this height was l by 2 
equal to the radius now till this point what is this so this is l by 2 cos theta so it has gone up by that much distance so it is mg l by 2 into 1 minus cos theta so this is the potential energy now write the total energy here so mg l by 2 1 minus cos theta plus uh, that 3 by 4 m l square by 8 omega dash square and plus the spring potential energy half k l by 2 theta square okay so these are the total energy which is going to be constant now just differentiate this so if you differentiate so mg l by 2 it will be as it is 1 will be 0 minus cos theta it will become sin theta plus sin theta d theta by dt and d theta by dt is uh, this omega dash okay so you will write it equal to omega dash d theta by dt 3 by 4 m uh, this will be l square by 4 not l square by 8 okay so be careful about the calculations so this is l square by 4 so this is l square by 4 and omega dash square it will be twice omega dash and d omega dash by dt and that will be alpha dash plus uh, 1 by 2 k l square by 4 will be there theta square differentiation so it will be 2 theta d theta by dt d theta by dt is omega dash this is 0 you will find omega dash is cancelling from all these expressions finally you can write sin theta to be equal to theta okay so finally uh, all the terms uh, you will uh, write it like this alpha dash alpha dash will be coming from here okay so alpha dash just uh, bring all these terms together and take it uh, to the rhs so alpha dash uh, will be equal to finally we will see it is the same it will be minus 2k by 3m plus 4g by 3l into theta okay so finally this omega square is equal to this same 2k by 3m plus 4g by 3l so in this way you can find the frequency also